basic concepts in e statistics. In this lesson, we will discuss the basic concepts of e statistics and its importance to our day to day living. Objectives at the end of the lesson, the student should be able to understand some important terms commonly used in e statistics. Define e statistics and its importance. Explain the two major kinds of e statistics and learn the methods of selecting samples. The development of e statistics. For centuries, people have been observing and gathering data as basis for their decision making. They are actually unaware that they are applying statistics without really knowing it. The word statistics was derived from the Latin word status, meaning state. Statistics was developed gradually as society is becoming interested in collecting and using data for a variety of applications. Its origin began when rules during the ancient times wanted to know the necessary facts about population of their states, wealth, health, lands, agriculture, taxation, and other areas of government. Here are some important terms in e statistics. First one is data. A data is a row pieces of evidences collected organized and analyzed by a statistician with the hope of establishing information or facts. Here are some examples of data. Sales made by a store, performance of students in a certain class, temperature of a city in a given period of time. Second one is variables. A variables are defined as the characteristics that differentiate a subject from one another. Here are some examples of variables. Academic grades, age, height, weight, and income. Third one is the population. It is an entire set of individuals or objects under study. Example, sophomore students of a certain college, and number of houses built in the Philippines at the present. The fourth one is the sample. A sample is a portion that is representative of the population and it can be a small or large. Example, Politicians are expending much money just to estimate their chance of winning based on the results of surveys from random sample of voters surveyed before an election. The fifth one is the measurement. Measurement is the assignment of numbers to objects or events according to rules. Example, number assigned to a basketball uniform used to recognize the player. The sixth one is the parameter. It is a number calculated on population that quantifies a characteristic of the population. Number seven is the summation notation. The summation sign, summation of x sub i to n such that i is equal to one is a short way of writing the quantity x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus x sub 3 plus x sub n. Example, if x sub 1 is equal to 3, x sub 2 is equal to 5, and x sub 3 is equal to 6, we have to find the summation of x sub i to 3 wherein i is equal to 1. So we just write x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus x sub 3 then we substitute all the values we have 3 plus 5 plus 6 add them together we have the summation of x sub i to 3 wherein i is equal to 1 is equal to 14 what is e statistics 
Statistics as a branch of mathematics concerned with collection, classification, analysis, and interpretation of numerical data with a definite purpose in any field of study. What are the importance of statistics? Statistics is important in politics. It serves as the basis of election of candidates depends on the surveys made by the pollster to predict the outcome and record the voters' preferences. Statistics is also used in market research. It is used to determine the best brands. Surveys provide information in predicting the choices of consumers. Statistics is also useful in medicine. Medical researchers conduct a study to determine the effectiveness of various drugs for the treatment of different diseases. Statistics is also used in engineering. The engineer tests the quality of product by inspecting some items and records the outcomes. Statistics is also useful in economy. The economist develops prediction formula to predict and forecast the economic growth of a country. We also use statistics in education. The teacher might focus on the latest set of students' test scores and use statistics to determine the average score of students. Let's proceed to the kinds of statistics. We have two kinds of statistics. The first one is the descriptive statistics. It is defined as the methods of organizing, summarizing, and presenting data in an instructive way. Here is an example. The table below which shows the Philippine government gives the following report about the population of the Philippines. The table shows the increasing population of the Philippines from the year 1980 to 2010. The second kind of statistics is inferential statistics. Inferential statistics are those methods that use a sample of the population for estimating and drawing conclusion. It uses statistical techniques for analysis of data and testing the reliability of the estimates. An example is if you want to know the percentage of unemployed in our country. Let's proceed on types of data. The first one is the primary data. These are information collected from the original source of data, which is first-hand in nature. Examples are data collected from interviews and surveys. The second type is the secondary data. These are information collected from published or unpublished sources like books, newspapers, journals, theses, class records, and others. Let's move on to the types of variables. The first one is qualitative variables. These are variables that are considered non-numeric by nature. Here are some examples of qualitative variables. Blood types, gender, religious affiliation, eye color, and marital status. The second type is the quantitative variables. These are variables that can be expressed numerically. Example, the number of children in the family, the income of the parents, and age. Let's proceed to the types of quantitative variables. We have the discrete variable. This is a variable that can be assumed a distinct values which usually results from counting. Example, the number of students in each section in mathematics course. 
The second one is the continuous variable. It is a variable that can take an infinite number of values and may not be measured accurately. Example is the sizes of a mango in a tree. Next are the four levels of measurement scales. The first one is the nominal scale. At this level, numbers are assigned to identify and classify individuals or objects. It is the weakest form of measurement and are classified as categorical. The only measurement that can be used in this scale is counting. Examples are sex, which includes male or female. Next is religion, Catholic or non-Catholic. Marital status, single or married. The second one is the ordinal scale. In ordinal scale, the individuals or objects are arranged in rank or order. Example is the table below. The table shows the rating of the mathematics instructor. So, in the table, we have the outstanding, very satisfactory, satisfactory, fair, and poor. The third one is the interval scale. Interval scale is used to obtain a more precise measurement by finding the difference between values. Examples are temperature, IQ scores, and time and hour calendars. Lastly is the ratio scale. This is the most powerful level of measurement. The data are compared by multiplication or division. The zero point is very important as well as the ratio between two numbers. Examples, weight and height as units of measure, time as a unit of measure, and distance as a unit of measure. Let's proceed in the methods of selecting samples. Number one is probability sampling. A probability sampling method is one in which the subjects of the sample are chosen on the basis of known probabilities. Random selection is performed by selecting a group of subjects, which is a sample for study, from a larger group, which is a population. We have four types of probability sampling. The first one is the simple random sampling. Each individual is chosen entirely by chance and each member of the population has an equal chance of being chosen. An example is, mathematics teachers are selected using random number in order to determine annual salaries. The second type is the stratified sampling. Stratified sampling is obtained by taking samples from each stratum or subgroup of a population. Example, nursing stops interviews all cancer patients in each of 20 randomly selected hospitals in northern Luzon. The third type is the cluster sampling. Cluster sampling involves the random selection of clusters of smaller units. It is less costly since the sample is within the frame of clusters and possibly close to one another. For instance, it is less costly to interview two voters within the family in clusters than voters from within the city. The fourth type is the systematic sampling. Systematic sampling is a process of selecting every nth member of a list of people or population, which is arranged alphabetically. Example, in a shopping mall, every 10th customer entering are interviewed to select his or her favorite store. Let's move on to number 2, which is the non-probability sampling. A non-probability sampling is a sampling technique where the samples are gathered in a process that does not give all the individuals 
in the population and equal chances of being selected. Here are the types of non-probability sampling. Letter A is haphazard sampling. This is one of the most common methods of sampling where the sample is presented to the researcher as the only data available. Example is the interviews conducted frequently by television news programs. Letter B is the purposive sampling. The samples selected in purposive sampling are based on the results of past experience. It makes data collection and analysis simple. Example is conducting a research for a psychology course. A researcher conducts survey to students who are shifting to other courses. Thank you for watching and hope you have learned a lot. See you in our next lesson. Goodbye!